Morning guys, welcome to UK Diver. My name's Andy and welcome to one of my favourite places in the absolute world, Sea Houses. I've done a lot of diving over here, so and, uh, we're doing more of the same today. So, what we're actually doing today is not actually diving with a seal. So the Farn Islands is a little group of islands just off the coast and it is one of the UK seal colonies. So when you come up here, most people want to dive with the seals and there's nothing wrong with that. But what we're actually up here to do is a wreck called the Somali, which I've probably taken our club rib over like a hundred times, we never actually do. So we're gonna actually dive that today. It's obviously, I mean, you can see it's beautiful there's not a cloud in the sky there's a little bit of breeze which is nice because it keeps the fog away anyway let's get kitted up get everything sorted and i probably will see you on the boat all right guys see you in a bit it is absolutely scorching guys i'm not even on the boat yet i've already got a sweat on so this is where you'd normally load up look and our boat's around there so it looks like we've got another bloody ladder to deal with, which isn't ideal. Well, there we are. Is that all your stuff on then, Lee, yeah? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, steady away, mate. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Jenny Glam with the... Uh, I like the towel. I think I can do with one. So, welcome guys to the Somali. Now, I've got to admit, when we jumped in, the visit the surface was absolutely pants. So we were not thinking this was going to be a great dive vis-wise. But fortunately, once we got about 10 meters down, the water cleared up to what you can see at the moment, which is pretty damn acceptable, I've got to be honest. Yes, as you saw, we're currently about 26 meters. I think on the whole dive, we bottomed out about 29 meters. So, plan for a 30 meter dive, and you're going to be well safe on this one, guys, for most tides, I would imagine. Now, here we are just in, I guess, the engine room. We're kind of milling around the boilers. Um, in a minute, you'll see me signal. There we are, signal to leave because I just want to check that it's looking because I've spotted a little swim through just over there. So, that's what we're going for now. Here we are a quick duck under this bit of pipe i think it is and then you literally swim in between the two boilers now if you've seen any of my videos where you actually see me in the flesh you'll know that i'm quite a large gentleman uh, and my buddy today was young skinny lee from doncaster so i swam through this and he swam over the top i want to check with him later he was like i wasn't sure i was going to get through there and i'm like mate if i can get through three of you can get through what are you on about To be fair though, you do have to make allowances. He is from Barnsley. So, as you can see guys, there is, it's a scrapyard, it definitely is a scrapyard, but there is still 
some pretty big structures to swim around and explore. I mean, we're going to go and take a proper look at the boilers again in a minute. We'll just do a circle around. So there you are. You can see them in the distance. Look, they are big things and still very much intact. That said, a couple of them are broken up. I don't know how many there was, but there's these two big ones. And then there seems to be some like little ones that are sort of broken up. And you can see the inside pipe work. Um, it's just like that shot there, you see, with all that. It looks like it virtually looks like pan pipes, doesn't it? You remember the play in the town centres to try and get you get, get them a couple of quid? So you've got underwater pan pipes. Well, really lots to explore, lots of little holes. Uh, I thought it was fantastic, and I was proper falling in love with this wreck at this point. Now I think this is my favourite bit of any boiler, all these little holes, because normally there is something living in each and every one, because it just makes a perfect habitat for little blennies, little crabs, little prawns, that kind of thing. So normally I'd be checking them out a little bit closer, but I'm quite excited to have a look down this deep hole here. So as you can see guys, lots of uh, internal boiler gubbins to look at, plenty of deck plating, that's that stuff, uh, that metal bits there, look with all the sort of symmetrical holes in them. And all I'm doing now is I'm sinking down into this little hole to have a look and I'll just take a little peek down the side of this boiler here because I can see green light at the end of that. So I'm thinking this is going to be a nice swim through, I'm going to go for this. But before I do, I thought, hmm. Let's just check it with a big torch, because we've got the spaz cam lights on at the moment, which you can see. So let's just check it with a big torch. And literally, the second I switched it on, there was like a million snags down there. So Andy definitely recommends, see, look, this is just snag, 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 snag. So I'm really pleased I checked it out first. But Andy says, before you go in anywhere, do thoroughly check it out, because uh, I nearly got caught short on this one. So absolutely not going through there at this point. So big breath in. Uh, if we can't go through, well, we'll just have to do a lee and go over. I tell you what, there's some good sized pollock on this wreck as well. I quite like a bit of bad pollock. Okay guys, now, like it says in the films, it's from here that shit gets interesting. So, what Lee's found here is a intact bottle. Now, for any scuba diver in the UK, it's like the ultimate goal to find an intact glass bottle. The glass, the delicate, they've been down there for, I don't know what this has been down there for, we're getting on for 80, 90 years now. So to find one intact is an absolute dream. Now, what's actually happening here is he can't get to it because there's that bit of metal in the way. So, Lee, bless him, he's not done much south coast diving, so I'm going to have to go and educate the boy and show him how you get stuff out. So, first of all, we don't want to hurt anything, so urchin, sorry, you're going to have to move. And then... Just move the bit of metal leaf. See, look, move it, and then you can get in. Now, I ain't getting any bottle for you, so go in there, there, lad. Go and get it. Look at him. He's in there like a rat up a drain pipe, isn't he? Loving it. So yeah, pretty impressive winch gear as well, just as a side note that he's found this bottle under. But yeah, he's getting in there and getting it. So we did speak afterwards and he was like, oh, I didn't realise you could move metal. It's like, of course you can, mate, you pick it up. So anyway, there he is, he's got his bottle. He's so pleased. Look at his little face. He's so happy, it's like Christmas. Now we've literally moved about 10 yards over that winch gear and I'm doing my usual collecting plastic crap off the bottom of the sea so I've picked up a snorkel that some divers lost and I spot here a toothbrush handle which baffles me it's like how has a toothbrush handle got here anyway I look up and right there you see me grab that 
that is an intact bottle now if you follow me on Instagram which you should link there you'll already know what this is but I'm going to show you this again in slow motion because I want you to see now you see the bubble in it not only is this an intact bottle this is an intact bottle with the content still in it after being on the seabed in storm after storm after storm and survived in 80 years so I am like this is brilliant okay this is best find I've only seen content brought up twice uh, in 10 years of diving nearly. So I've got to show Lee, bash him on the head. Look at that, mate. How cool is it? He gives me a okay. And then he's showing me that he's found some paintbrush handles that are missing the bristles because they've kind of rotted away, which is good because I didn't know what they were. And then I turn around and all of a sudden there's, there's hundreds of toothbrush handles everywhere. So this is obviously part of the cargo of the ship. Now, most of them are, are just handles. Again, the, the bristles would have been natural hair, so they've sort of dissolved away. Um, so I'm just having a bit of a fettle. There's another paintbrush handle. And then I just look up and I can't, literally can't believe it, but right there, look, right there, another bottle. And it looks intact now this one's concreted in a little bit and what i mean by that is that's where the sand and the sediment compacts together and that's how sedimentary rocks made so so this is sort of getting buried in the rock so i need something to fettle it out now i reach over to find something to grab it uh, to sort of fettle it out with and i grab this chunk of lead and then there's not one but then there's another longer one and i'm just sort of having a look at it thinking well, what's lead doing here that's a bit weird isn't it and anyway what a spot now, I just can't believe. So under the lead, there appears to be little bottles. <laughs> and again, little bottles that appear to have the contents in. So I'm like, this is this is mad. You know what I mean? This is like winning the scuba diving lottery over here in the UK. I just cannot believe my absolute look. So there's one look, little brown bottle, oily liquid in it inside with some glittery sparkly particles. And there's another one exactly the same. Now, what you might be asking is, Andy, I wonder why them bottles have been surrounded by lead. And you know what? I should have been asking that question as well, but it didn't occur to me. I'm absolutely loving this. This is fantastic. I have found so many bottles. This is great. So I'm still conscious that there's that, that bottle that I've got a fettle at that's concreted in. So it's time to look for a tool to get that out. Well, there's lots of toothbrush handles, so let's get one of those. I look down to my left, pick out this toothbrush. Wouldn't you know it? It's kind of the only one there that's actually still got his bristle, bristles after 80 years. And I'm like, well, that's epic too. I'm keeping that. So this is just a total treasure. I mean, there it is. Look, the only one that's there that's still got its bristles in. I couldn't believe it. So anyway, it, 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 this is getting too much. My luck's about to run out. So I'm just thinking, right, I need to get this bottle and move on because uh, something bad's going to happen. Little did I know it already had. So here we are digging, 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 just sort of scraping away some of that concretion and trying to lift it out and the second it comes out, pop, there we are in a big plume of black goopy horribleness. But again, another intact bottle. This one hasn't got its corking unfortunately, so no contents, but it is another intact bottle. So that's kind of four that I've got, three with the contents in. I am a very, very happy chicken now, and the Somali is absolutely now number one on my favorite wreck of all time, because this is just unbelievable. So the problem is, is I've got nowhere to put these things now, because I am diving in full sort of tech mode. So I've got spare masks, spare DSMB, spare torches, spare this, that, and the other in my pockets, and no room for these. So after a quick shuffle around, uh, and a quick rescue, because that one tried to escape, uh, we sort of shuffled things around, grabbed them into pockets a bit tighter, and we got everything in because there was no way on God's green earth I was leaving them bottles behind. Not a hope in hell. So in all my excitement, I completely forgot about my buddy, so quick check around, where's he gone, I can't find him, oh, there. oh he's just there, right, okay, it's not too far away, so yeah, let's move on. So guys, a bit more tidying up here, so I've got some abandoned fishing gear, lost fishing gear, so this is sort of hook and line sort of stuff, so all I do, cut the uh, hook off because that's marred steel and rust away, tidy up the line, put that in the pocket for disposal and the lead will go in the bucket ready for scrapping in to donate to charity. Now there was quite a few of these around and apparently 
Uh, these are one of the more famous things on the wreck, and this is a tyre, or a spare tyre, I guess, for a, you know, US Willis Jeep. So, if any of my friends over the pond own a Willis Jeep and need some spare tyres, let me know. I've got a great deal going on some. Check out the Viz, guys. I mean, just check it. An absolutely cracking dive. I really enjoyed it. Now, this is long enough for part one of the video. I hope you stay tuned for part two, where I explain to you what's just gone wrong and how it goes uh, a bit sideways for the rest of the day. And uh, yeah, what ended up happening, which uh, really wasn't a very nice or pleasant experience. But anyway, that's enough. Please like the video. Please subscribe and hit that little notification bell so you don't miss out on the next one. But other than that, guys, dive safe and I will see you in part two.